lots of cures at this point. I know that yesterday we planned, we heard from the, the gentleman from the EDA. I don't know why he's here today or not. Any Jim Dunn can. Yes, Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Jim Dunn with Bots for uh, Charles Perkins and Richard Danza are also with me and will be happy to answer questions. Um, what we have talked with the city about is a $40 million investment, 200 new jobs, $19 million a year in payroll. Uh, that is a significant investment. That's a significant commitment for our organization to make. We certainly can't answer the questions about the school system or money to schools. We certainly want an educated workforce, and we're concerned about that. We're also concerned about the health of the children in this community. And we have tremendous needs in the East End and other areas of the city that we're trying to address with the health care services that we would provide with these investments at these three separate locations. Uh, Bonsport has been a citizen in this region for almost 50 years. It has provided ongoing services and support to those most in need in our community. We're absolutely committed to doing that again. Um, we, there's been questions about transparency. We're holding a meeting uh, on our St. Mary's campus this evening for that neighborhood to again remind the community that if this process moves forward, all that really does is give Bond Spore an opportunity to present a proposed use for the property. And we, uh, we were talking with the city about proposed uses before this Redskin deal ever surfaced. In fact, I remember a breakfast with Councilman Tyler at St. Mary's December of last year talking about the property. We are going to have a report with two or three proposed uses for the property. Uh, detailed information on economic impact. We expect to have that information available by the first of the year. At that time, we would come to the city, we would come to the community and engage them in the conversation as to whether or not those proposed uses make sense to the city, make sense to the neighborhood and the community. Uh, obviously, we fully understand that we can't get a special use permit or a building permit until we have satisfied the community and the city and answered all those questions. In addition, we've agreed to upgrade and maintain the playing fields. We have engaged Historic Richmond to work with us uh, on saving the buildings or the facades of the buildings or as much of the buildings as we can. We can't be more specific until we get the proposed uses back and know exactly what we're dealing with. Also, uh, even though uh, Mr. Banta and Mr. Ward Richmond were in the building briefly last week, we haven't had the opportunity to have engineers and architects in to do the full due diligence that's required of something like that. But again, that is our commitment to the community. Uh, we've also agreed at the city's request that at a site be determined by the city and the neighborhood, we would pay for the relocation of the top lot that's on that property and make improvements uh, to that facility for the community's use. So those are the things that we're trying to do. And when we talk about the magnitude of the investment that we have proposed, um, we really don't know that we're getting any special treatment. That is a significant investment on our part in terms of the front investment, the job creation, the payroll, the real estate taxes, and all the ancillary benefits that comes from that level of investment. So at the city's request, and again, Mr. Marshall gave you the timeline, we have really put the pedal to the metal, and all this has been done since the early part of September to try to meet the deadline that the city was asking us to meet. So that's that's what we have tried to do, and, and certainly any specific questions, we'd be happy to try to answer those for us. We have questions for Mr. Mr. Dunn, let's, let's go back. You made reference to a December meeting. If my recollection is correct, um, that meeting was really about the hospitality house. It was not about the West End School. Is that correct? Well, it, it was actually about both. Uh, we said we want to discuss 
two issues, the guest house and the West Hampton School. And, so, and, and we've been talking about West Hampton since the Charette, which was done in November of 2009. So that, that's been a That was more than just the fact that, that you had the interest of the property, nothing that wasn't any, had not been stated publicly. That's pretty much Correct. it. Yes. Yeah, that was the deal. Um, but yet, after the fact, once you got serious about the negotiation, you chose not to bring me in the process. <laughs> We were right. working. We were working with with the mayor and the city staff at their I request. I understand. That's, that's what we made the decision to work with the city staff and the mayor. I was not a party to it, so I, I really didn't become a party to it until the day the announcement was made. By twelve thirty, I had the opportunity to meet with Mr. Marshall and I think Ms. Suzette Dinslow on on the map. That's what I'm working on. So I think we need to set the stage there. Um, the other thing was is that bonds uh, pours, bonds pours uh, has been working with the community. We had that community meeting, and unfortunately, someone said nothing was going on at that meeting. I know later on tonight we're going to hear from the citizens on that. Uh, that has been the biggest. That has been expressed to me by the citizens is a lack of participation, even though they had asked on multiple occasions to be a part of the And I know Mr. Tyler, um, Charlotte Perkins with Bond Score, and you've addressed that in several, I think, articles and here a couple of times. The person that you're referencing to was not party to the non disclosure agreement, and in fact would not have known that we were in negotiations that included the West Hampton School. It is a business transaction, and with all business transactions that we enter into, uh, we typically enter them with a non-disclosure agreement. This was under one of those. So that person that you referenced um, was not party to it and would not have known. You understand that from the citizen's eyes, that that person was standing to hear, just like you're standing here, and representing lots of course in a public forum. And so they looked at this individual as being uh, gospel when they came to the word they were, they were spreading. Uh, and right, wrong, or indifferent, that's what you're facing. And I want you to understand that. Uh, as I've said all along, the concern I've had about the deal is, is the fact that the neighborhood was not brought into the process. And for whatever reason, it was not brought in. It was brought in in a very broad brush way, talking about the master plan and all the other things, but it wasn't talking about the specific. The minute this thing began to percolate, we could have mitigated a lot of the conversations we have, we've been having if we had this, this conversation. I think all we can, we can say to that, again, we, we were on a very quick timeline to turn something around at the city's request. And, and as I just said a minute ago, until we present a proposed use to the community with full input, like we do every project that we do, there, we haven't proposed a specific use yet for the community to respond to. We couldn't, we couldn't get the study done that quick. It was, it was in progress, and it will be finished soon. So we're, we are not trying to exclude the community from anything. Uh, we're asking the community. We know the community will have input, wants input. We, as we've done with the guest house and other projects, will respond to the community's issues and concerns once we can present the actual proposed use. Thank you. Yeah. We we'll need to uh, okay. conclude here pretty shortly. So I have one more we reach to wrap into this. Thank, thank you, Mr. Mm -hmm. Chairman. I, I, uh, I, I really do appreciate uh, uh, number one, the need for secrecy when we are uh, negotiating deals. I understand. I also appreciate the fact that uh, we've all been a pressure, in a pressure cooker on this day because of the time constraints. Uh, we don't have a lot of lead time to make real at the end of this process what we're promising. So I get that. But, but when, I, when I get briefed on this 3 o'clock on the day I'm asked to vote on a resolution, the very same day, uh, then, then that's problematic. Um, 
Now, so we start out with limited information. And it sounds like we're clobbering you guys over here uh, because we've been sort of stint on information. Uh, I don't need stint. I shouldn't use that word. The fact is, it's, it's been uh, time to impress from start to finish. Uh, but, but again, uh, I just want to put that out there in perspective so that we don't get mad at each other. Uh, we got issues, but uh, uh, we don't know who's at fault. We won't even go there. I, I do need to understand uh, why I would not conclude that this is a marvelous deal for Barnes School, who has been a wonderful uh, corporate citizen in this city. Uh, but all of our hospital and medical facilities are going to have to expand as a consequence to Obamacare. So y'all are going to have to expand anyway. Expand services anyway. So let's not get this stuff twisted here. Um, it's a darn good deal to get expansion where it's got to happen anyway. Um, and I ain't mad at anybody for using whatever vehicle you need to get there. But I don't think we need to be uh, confused about all of this. Um, it's a wonderful deal for Barnes Cooper. It's a wonderful deal for uh, Redskins, who doesn't seem necessary to put up a dime. Their brand is gold. Wonderful. But do you have, do you have a question for well, well, I'm just, I, I just want to know, again, do you see uh, the benefit to the taxpayer. From your perspective. I'll talk a bit about the community outreach this will bring. And I'll talk about the services in the East End, which are in dire need. And I'll also talk about the fact that, yes, we would not disagree that we will have the need to expand care. That care need is primarily in primary care physicians, as you probably are well aware. In addition to that, this will allow us to expand medical care in the city. Many hospitals are actually leaving the city, to your point. Many hospitals don't want to be in the city or have medical care in the city areas. We feel the opposite. We've made a strong commitment over the last years, particularly in the East End. I know you're aware of that, and I appreciate that. Um, with this, one of the things that we know is most needed in the East End is diabetes education, Wellness Center for our children. We need to address the childhood obesity issue. City of Richmond is one of the, is number two for obesity. We need to address that. This will give us the ability to build a facility there, provide jobs there, good jobs. That's the other issue we have a problem with. People continue to leave the city and go elsewhere for jobs. This creates jobs for those people, good paying jobs. And in the East End, we truly believe it will bring the required and needed medical services. It will also bring an improvement to an area that we hope will bring other things, such as grocery stores, and such as new libraries, and those types of things. The more economic build that goes on in that area, we believe that those things will also help the community will come. At the West Hampton School site, to Jim's point, we don't know yet what we are going to specifically put there. We do know it will be medical use. We do know it will provide jobs, yet again, for the city, good paying jobs. We also know that there are medical needs in that area. There's many different ones. One is senior services. One is children's services in that area. And another could be oncology. So that is part of what the study that in January Jim references to that we back to the community to discuss. And at Lee Street, we're, we're very excited at Lee Street. At Lee Street, one of the biggest issues, and I think you heard me talk about this before, men are not good at taking care of their health. Unless you have a strong, sometimes woman behind you telling you gotta go to the doctor, you're not the best with it. One of the ties that the Redskins have been so great about is men's health. Prostate cancer is huge. Um, doing their physicals, doing those types of things, the outreach that we can bring there with the men's health site. There's really not a true men's health facility um, that I'm aware of in the city of Richmond. This will be a great opportunity for that. Sports rehab, and in addition, Movement Mania, which is 
the Bon Secours, um, it's a Bon Secours outreach program around childhood obesity that we actually collaborate with 26 other organizations within the city to help educate and improve, um, to educate children about how to eat healthy, to educate them about how to exercise properly, and actually an incent and award them to do it will be housed there as well. And what greater spot for children to come than some place where a professional team plays. So for me, I can talk to you about what I believe we will bring to, in an outreach to the community. I will also tell you that the Redskins do bring a huge amount of community outreach. If you look at their charitable foundation and what they do with children, they've actually already, I believe, in this city alone, they've um, refurbished and uh, built, either refurbished and or built, a couple of playing fields for some of our schools. Those types of outreach to children are huge tied to NFL 60. In addition to that, breast cancer is very big, as you know, in the NFL. We all see where they're being. Um, they will also do visits at the local hospitals, military bases, and we believe that the value that they're going to bring from the Charitable Foundation will be great. And you'll hear more about that tonight as a representative of the Redskins will actually be in St. Mary's to speak to that. So I would let Jim, you, um, and or Richard talk about the actual, um, any financial other piece, but I can also tell you, um, it's not just jobs, and it's not just taxes, it's about outreaching those much needed services to the city. And um, that's always been Bon Secours' commitment, and this just allows us to expand and grow in that commitment. I, uh... Uh, one last question. Uh, well, physical health is hugely important, and the expansion of your services will go, go far there. Economic health is even more important. I haven't heard one word from any part about minority participation in any of this construction, in any of this development. I haven't heard one word knowing that uh, Black businesses hire black people. Like white businesses hire white people, though not exclusively either way. And local hires are hugely important, just as local hires for employment, uh, uh, as well as, as contractors. Uh, and it, it, it makes well overall of the general economy locally. We have, for the last four projects, hired people from West Missoula somewhere. <laughs> and we don't have local participation worth two cents. Yeah. Let me, Mr. Hill. us with that. Let me, pardon me. Let, let me butt in here for a minute. Okay? First, I need an answer to the question. First, What's the commission here? It is. It is. So the answer to that, first question is, why is this a good deal for Richmond? And then at the bottom it says, maximize the participation in minority business people and local firms of construction and professional services. Now, that's already stated in there. Uh, it's been stated for the last 20 years, Mr. Finnegan. I want to know how it's going to make that work. Let me finish. Yeah. Mr. Drew, the fact of the matter is that there are jobs that we will get out of this. Bon Secures is already right now in a training program with us, with us at Manchester Bidwell to figure out a job description and what they need to learn for the program we're going to be teaching so that they will offer jobs, they're doing that, they're partners, they're very, very good partners. So the jobs things have been taken care of right here. And later on this evening, we're going to talk about section three, a presentation on that, which guarantees small business uh, participation. So, so the job, that, that, that ain't done on the table. And you may disagree, but I'm, I'm going to have to disagree with you. Well, I'm sorry if you would allow me. Section three deals just, yeah. only with federally funded projects. Now, I'm not, we're not talking federal. We're talking about this project, local funding, and the taxpayer's money. And don't confuse me with Section 3. <laughs> okay, I think that move on. Um, yeah, Mr. Yes, Jeff. I just okay. actually would like Bonds, of course, to speak to the C project. Um, in second year uh, in our community, that's a Is that a question, Mr. Chair, or request? You can make a comment on question, Jeremy. Uh, if, if I may, my name is Richard Bant. I'm Vice President of Construction and Real Estate for Bonds of Corps. 
Um, I've been with Bon Secours 10 years, and from the very first day that I arrived here, Bon Secours absolutely, absolutely requires minority participation in everything that we do. Since I've been involved in construction with Bon Secours, I require every one of our contractors, I don't care who you are, to involve minority companies. Uh, prior to me coming to Richmond, I was uh, a contractor in Louisville, Kentucky. I've got a very good uh, history with minority participation. I believe in minority participation. I don't care if you're black, white, red, purple, or blue. You know, um, we're a free country. We fought very, very hard uh, for the rights of everybody. Mom's Court believes in that. I work uh, almost every week with minority contractors to make sure they're involved in our projects. And go, we go so far as uh, actually schooling those minority contractors on what they need to do to participate in our project. We meet with the contractor and we pair them up so that they do have a chance at anything that we build anywhere in, in Richmond. We've got a very good history with uh, minority participation. And we're proud of it. Yeah, thank you. Cynthia, do you have any more? Questions or comments? Um, I, I certainly think the gentleman sufficiently addressed it, but in addition, um, there has been an ongoing effort, and we're in the second year of those efforts to grow small businesses in the East End specifically that will hire and so forth. So I didn't know if you wanted to speak to that. Um, the seed project is something we've been most proud of, and it is where we actually give um, a, a grant to small businesses in the East End. Um, we just gave our second one this year um, to a small business to start in the East End. I think this is our second bakery. Um, this one is a bakery this year, and each year, um, I think we, um, we have, what, two more years, I think, that we actually um, will give grants to small businesses. And why we do that is because, again, we believe that bringing vital businesses to the community, allowing them to provide to those community the things they need to have healthier lifestyles is critical and important to the growth of those communities. Mr. Chair, can I just say the first year it was about six small businesses, and then this year is how many? I think it's six or seven, and it's over a hundred thousand dollars in small and grants for the first two years of the program. Right, I just wanted to this, yeah, this week we announced, I think, the, the latest one. Right. Okay. Anything? Uh, I think at this point we've asked uh, many, many questions. I'm going to summarize. I have not asked questions this through. But i got a few statements I'd like to make uh, that uh, talk about this not much over open process. I don't think you heard. The fact of the matter, back in June, this government got on call. Yeah, you all want to say anything about it. Because we've got a full schedule for that. Anyhow, back in June, government got on call about the program. We all knew that this was. Being talked about and worked on. A couple of months ago, I mean, the word on the street was we were looking at the site behind the museum, possibly there, they don't know, among other sites. Um, the fact of the matter is, you know, it's going through the EDA, that's the Economic Development Project, and they are a very sound organization. They spoke yesterday in the time. They looked at the numbers. The numbers actually work. I don't know where you can take money and sit around not doing anything with it. And put it to work and get this type of return. I don't think you can find that place anywhere. I mean, I can get the uh, administration for doing that. And it, it seems to me that it's darn if you do and darn if you don't. We're too slow or too fast. You can't seem to get this thing in the middle, you know? And frankly, we talk about the public process, we're just now starting the public process. If I were to buy some property, I certainly don't want to get all negotiations out there in in the public to decide what I'm going to pay for a piece of property, what I'm going to do. I think at this point we're there. If Bond Secures puts this money up front and we go through this SUP process, they don't know what they're going to come out with. So they're really kind of hanging out there right now in this whole situation. But the public process starts now, actually. And this is the way it should be working. And this is totally, totally normal. You know, in from a business aspect, if I'm going to go out and start a location, I'm going to try to go out and find, you know, somebody to do price a spray, somebody to do this. I'm going to go out to several vendors, I'm going to do it all the time. And they're going to put together a package deal. Now, one time I get the very best package deal, 
I can't go back and cherry pick on every little item. And I think that's what we're doing here. And I don't think that's fair. So I'm just letting you know where I stand on this. But I do appreciate you all coming down here and explaining this as, as you have. And as you can see, I do support your project. Thank you very much. This concludes this part of the uh, land use committee, the special presentation that you have here today. Thank you. We're going to take about a 10 minute recess at this point to reorganize. Thank you. Fun, fun, fun. Hey Rick, how you doing man?